We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is John J. Hooker. We've been talking about his death with dignity proposal. We've also been talking about his life and times over the last 60 years in Tennessee and in Tennessee politics. John J., in the last segment, you talked about getting protection from Governor Buford Ellington in 1960, 1970 when you were running for governor because of an assassination threat. Of course, Ellington was the person who beat you in 1966 right. to be governor. Uh, in 1970, people thought you were going to get elected, but a guy named Winfield Dunn, who nobody had ever heard of, beat right. you. had three problems. So first of all, that the Democratic Party was divided 50-50. We had almost beat him in 66. The Tennessean was so strong, as you remember in those days, as was the banner. And that conflict was so deep. And the reason we thought we could beat him in 66 is that Frank Clement had lost two years before for the Senate, and it, it was Clement and Ellington and the Knightsville Banner on one side and the Tennessean and, and Kefauver and Gore and Hooker on the other side, and we thought that we could win. I didn't th think people were going to elect me because they were in love with John J. Hooker. I just thought people were going to elect me because they didn't want to re-elect Ellington. We turned and out to be... And the leapfrog politics. The leapfrog going. politics. Now, you also were running in, in by 1970, and you had, the, you had Richard Nixon in the White House, and you had the Southern strategy. You think I think that had a lot to do with getting Oh, no the question. The, 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 one of the great political frauds in the history of America is what uh, the White House did to a business I, called, I had called Many Pearls Chicken, in which we had started that business with pencil and piece of paper, and all of a sudden it, it was worth $250 million and 1968 dollars. And Nixon decided to instigate, instigate an investigation and challenge the accounting of our business. And we had done exactly what Price Waterhouse told us to do. There was no more question about the legitimacy of our accounting than the man in the moon. But he wouldn't let us issue any numbers, wouldn't let us have a stockholders meeting, wouldn't let us show the banks any money, so forth. And so the stock went straight up and then it went straight down. And so a lot of people got convinced that I was a crook, that I had cheated on the, on the uh, numbers and, and many pearl chicken, and undoubtedly that had a, a significant part of the campaign, uh, uh, campaign. I don't say it's the sole reason, but it was, a, it was a major reason. Now, your opponent, Winfield Dunn, served a, a full term four years as governor. In those days, all you could do was serve four years. You were term right, limited right, after, right. One year, after one term. The two of you became great friends. Oh, he, great. I love Winfield he, Dunn. He, he took away your great dream, so why didn't you hate him? Because he's a gentleman. He's such a great, great, great guy, right? Um, and just right. so decent. And, and first, I talked to him yesterday. He, and he called me up and said, I just want you to know, is there anything I can do for, for you under any circumstances while you're going through this sickness and when you got this problem? I mean, he just couldn't be more a gentleman. And I, I, I truly love Winfield Dunn and admire him greatly. And, and uh, I'm happy he was governor. I'm, glad, I'm sorry I wasn't governor. I had, a, I don't want to take too much time, but I, I had a very simple reason for running for governor. I, I thought that I could get to be elected president of the United States. And, the, and I thought that, Pat, knowing that there are 10 million people out there better qualified than me to be president. But I knew a big secret. None of them gonna run. And that all I had to do if I could get to be governor was to run against somebody else who happened to be governor or ex senator. And if I could have gotten elected pres uh, governor in either 66 or 70, I'd have run for president of the United States in 76 against Jimmy Carter. And I'd go to my grave leaving because of my Kennedy connection, connection with the blacks. And I had Tish, who was a great uh, first lady. Uh, I, I think I'd have been elected president of the United States. Never happened, but I'll always believe it would have happened if I could have gotten elected governor. So many questions to ask. I think we'll probably try to do a second show out of this. But uh, one of the ironies of, of, of life is the Nashville Banner at that time was one of your great arch enemies. <laughs> they they the would least. go after you every right. day, front page editorials right. and stories. Later, you were part of a group that purchased the banner. You were the publisher of the I banner. Of that. How surreal was oh, that, that was to great. walk The night I walked in that room, room Ken Morrell and all those guys who'd been paid to assassinate me, all of a sudden now uh, I'm the publisher of the newspaper. And so to You're say, their boss. To say, I was their boss. Briefly. To say the least, uh, yeah, <laughs> say the least, that was a great a great moment. Uh, you didn't run in 1974 for governor. You could have won. Thirteen uh, Democrats uh, ran that I had year. No, I Why could didn't have you in Florida. Uh, I had promised a man he made me chairman of the board of, the, of a company called STP, which was an oil additive that you know you, you put in your car. And he paid me a lot of money. I had a jet airplane, flew me back and forth to Nashville. And I had promised him that I would stay three years if, if, if I became president. CEO of the company, and that governor's race came within the context of that three years, and I had given him my word of honor, and so in the final analysis, I, I couldn't do it. And even though I wanted to do it in the worst way, because I knew 
uh, with almost certainty that if I had run in 70 in a 13-man race, uh, uh, that, I, that I could have gotten 40-some-odd percent of the votes in the primary, and the Republicans were going to lose that year because of Watergate. But it didn't happen, and so I never was governor. Let me wrap up this by asking you, you have said jokingly that your legacy is that you're the biggest loser in Tennessee politics, in Tennessee political history. And but obviously I think there's more to it than that. Yeah, well, I would say what legacy, what do you want to be known as, remembered by, Jeff? Uh, I, 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 I want to be governor in the sense that uh, I tried so hard to be governor. Uh, I was the biggest loser because I had so many chances to be governor. Uh, but, it's, and, and, but when I grade my own papers in the middle of the night when you have to go to the bathroom at my age, uh, I think of myself in a different way, and that is that when I couldn't get elected to public office, I determined to be a maverick and bring lawsuits challenging the government itself, uh, whether it's about judges or campaign contributions or, or death with dignity or whatever, and that makes me... Chen Jay Hooker, thank you for coming in. As I say, we'll have you back for another show. That's great. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you can be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to Loose Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. In fact, it's already up this week. Have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.